you cannot solve it, don't worry about it. I keep telling that to myself and about 50% of my stress has been uh, reduced, guaranteed. With that, hey everybody, welcome to Be Positive with Bali, episode number 18. Now before we get started, hit the subscribe button, click like and click share. Now, the numbers of COVID-19 is not reducing. In fact, it's increased again. Some call it the second wave, uh, some call it the third wave. But I think it was the right time to invite, uh, you know, a doctor, a frontliner, a hero to share uh, his views and his opinion on the pandemic. And at the same time, we will also be having uh, a little bit of a look into his life, how he became a doctor and some fun round as well. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking about Dr. Navin, a frontliner in Malaysia. Let the dialogue begin. Dr. Navin, thank you so much for joining. Yeah, no worries. Glad to be on your show, Bali. Now, before we get started, you know, since the beginning of pandemic, every single doctors have been our heroes they're called the frontliners but you know i think to those who are watching on behalf of them i'd like to say thank you so much for your contribution and the contribution is still going on yeah yeah definitely definitely and uh, not just the doctors but you know a whole group of policemen and uh, true firemen and everyone actually yeah okay now we're going to be covering a little bit about yourself, some fun questions, and then we're going to sure. dive down to the pandemic. Now, yep. before, we, before we get started, how long have you been uh, in the medical industry as a doctor? Okay, um, I started off, uh, I graduated in 2010. So it's about roughly around 10 years now. And um, so I started off as a houseman in uh, Hospital Kuala Lumpur, basically the war zone of all the hospitals. And um, I moved on uh, as a medical officer to Taiping for two years, and I was in ENT in Taiping. And uh, in 2014, um, I took a decision to actually go into a private GP practice, which I'm currently uh, running at the moment uh, in uh, Rawang. So, yeah, that's uh, roughly a rough timeline of my uh, medical career. Okay. Now, you know, Dr. Navin, the question is always like, why? You know, every single thing which we do, there must be a reason. So why did you decide to, you know, become a doctor? There must be, a, you know, a reason to it. Yeah, um, there's always a reason in uh, everything that we do, I believe. And um, you see, honestly speaking, being uh, very honest, uh, I didn't decide to be a doctor in the, in the beginning. You know, um, okay. uh, what happened was uh, after I left school, um, I actually was very indecisive. And um, the trend was going on about ITs and computers at that time. And uh, I yeah. graduated school, I think, in the year of 2000. So, yeah. you know, I went into um, actually a diploma in computer science for two years. So I completed that. And um, somehow or other, I just, I just didn't feel it. Uh, I was in place and I, I felt something was missing. And uh, my parents were encouraging me, but they didn't force me to go into medicine. So they gave me options and, you know, um, I thought about it deeply and I thought, you know, this, may, this could be a calling to me that, you know, maybe I am uh, probably made to become a doctor eventually. And uh, I took the leap of faith and, um, you know, eventually everything turned out pretty well. And um, I think I'm quite happy practicing what I'm doing at the moment and mm. a very fulfilling uh, career, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. now with the, the, the perks, there's always, you know, the special <laughs> perks in, in every single yeah. job, you know, from, uh, uh, you know, if you are in the IT line or in the corporate world, you get corporate rates. And obviously there's a special perks, uh, you know, being a doctor. So what is the most special perks, you know, uh, or the one which you really like, uh, you know, as a doctor, you know, you enjoy the most? Okay. Um, I, I'm in a GP practice. So mm -hmm. I see a lot of cases with, across the board. From, from a basic cough and flu to things like cancers, which I diagnose. And, you know, it can, it can vary quite a bit. But, um, of course, there are a lot of perks that doctors enjoy. I won't deny that. 
But to me personally, the best thing that I really enjoy is that smile on the patient's face or the mm-hmm. family member's face okay. when I actually, you know, either get a correct diagnosis or I prevented a complication or, you know, eventually I managed to cure the problem. So mm-hmm. to me, that self-satisfaction cannot beat any other perks that I get. Yeah, okay. So that, that, that's probably one of the biggest things. That means you, and, you, 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 you look at your job as itself, you know, it's, it's a perk because, you know, yeah. you can avoid, I mean, you basically get a chance to help someone uh, to yeah. avoid, you know, complications and, and stuff like that. But uh, as a doctor, you know, I'm sure when you go out, there are yeah, special so, privileges. So, yeah. What yeah. are your most so, favorite special privilege as a doctor? Is there so any... Come- so coming to the second part, of course, every, every occupation, we have these privileges that we get, right. yeah, definitely. So yeah. my most favorite privilege of actually using the doctor title is uh-huh. actually when I speak to customer service. So I, I realized it many years ago that whenever I speak to people on customer service, and if I, if I mention that I am Dr. Nabin, Things uh, seem to get um, pretty fast, you know. They they tend to much get easier. Opportunity. Much easier, much easier, you know. So <laughs> that, that's probably one thing I really love, and um, yeah. So so that's that's one thing I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, now let's get to some fun round. I. I picked out all these weird questions oh. from oh, yeah. uh, you know the great Google, and I've actually made my own version of fun round. So we have a couple of questions. Just go through it really quickly. So don't need to think so much about it. So no the worries. first question, the first question I have is, you know, what is your cure? That means everybody has a way of, uh, you know, fixing uh, hiccups. What is your cure of uh, curing hiccups? Okay. Probably. It's a bit weird, right? I, I, I'm <laughs> sure you never expected a question like this before. But, you know, what is your cure? Yeah. To, you know, um, what is the cure for your, I mean, any hiccups yeah. you have or you tell your friends, what do you do? Okay, um, of course, we, we, as a doctor, of course, we always divide it into conservative methods and actually medical treatments. So, okay. so when you come to conservative methods, something that this comes on top of my head. So, will be things like, you know, you, you breathe into a bag and okay. um, you drink a glass of water very quickly. Oh. And... Um, yeah, that, that's, that's a few things which actually help to get the hiccup off. And um, the other thing is uh, holding your breath and actually swallowing your saliva three times. So that also can help to get the hiccup away. Okay, now, now that's something I never, never realized because always, you know, my friends will tell, okay, hold your breath. I'm like, <gasps> I'll be holding, but I never got to that, you know, yeah, saliva swallow part. So swallow, sw- swallow part, I did not go. So I just was holding my breath, you know, I just yeah. was holding my breath like an idiot. So now I know that, okay, hold your, yeah. hold your breath and, you know, swallow your saliva. So saliva at least something, it's okay, yeah. so something we learned today. So another thing is just put bag and drink water quickly. You breathe, yeah. okay. you no, know, you, either you breathe into a bag just okay. for a couple of seconds or the other thing is a glass of water, drink it very fast. It probably okay. can get there. Those are mild hiccups and then it will go off. Of course, if right. you go to long, some patients with long-term hiccups and then you've got to sort out, go towards uh, medical treatments and, you know, t- uh, tablets and medicines, per se, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's the quick tip of how to, yeah, you know, a quick tip of hiccup relief. Now, next question. Uh, there yeah. must be one movie which you can watch over and over again. What movie would that be? Um, okay, the one movie I really can watch over and over is uh, a Hindi movie. Uh, it's called Zindagi Na Mili Dubara. Oh, okay. Yeah, All so right. that's my, one of my very, very yeah, it's favorite a, it, It's a very fun movie. Yeah, it's, it's really fun. You know, and teaches us a lot about life as well. Correct, yeah. correct. 
I like the part when, uh, you know, they go to the bathroom in Spain. Was that in Spain? So they, were go- they went to the bathroom and then the stranger came in and they both yeah. scream and then they all ran out. <laughs> I think yeah. that, that was one of my, you know, favorite moments of that movie. Now, yeah, final yeah, fun yeah. round, final fun yeah. question, for, you know, in this round okay. is that, okay. you know, if an- animals could talk, you know, uh, which one would you think be the most annoying one? Um, cats. I, mean, that, <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why, but I, I had that thought. You know, I just got that feeling that you're going to answer cats. <laughs> <laughs> let's not let's not offend the cat lovers who are going to be watching. So yeah. <laughs> let's move on. Yeah, sure, now, sure. No worries. Twenty twenty has has been, I think, the most unpredictable year for everyone. Yeah, with yeah. the pandemic. Uh, yes. Would you like to share your experience as a doctor, as a frontliner, uh, to all the viewers? Um, you see. Uh, I'm a frontliner in a general practice. Mm-hmm. And um, so sometimes my situation, um, it's a bit different from the frontliners in a general hospital. But I do have a lot of my friends who are in the general hospital as well. So um, I would say the experience is, um, I mean, things are very different. Things are tough. You, you view things very differently uh, since this year began and especially from March onwards. And um, you see when the cases have been picking up, lifestyle for everyone has been changing drastically. And as a frontliner, I think um, you are on your toes uh, basically practically 24-7 for the last six months or so at the moment, I would say. And, um, you know, you are always uh, alerted that, you know, there are cases of COVID coming in. Or if you're in a general hospital, um, you know, you have uh, consistently, uh, you have been uh, working or taking shifts with your colleagues. But it's, it's not very easy to take leave at the moment as well for those frontliners in the hospital. Leave alone um, general practices uh, where, you know, we are individually managing the practice ourselves. So... Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, um, it's a tough situation. I think it's not just for the frontliners, but I think everyone uh, as a whole per se. And um, a very different experience, I think we in this age group of uh, this current era has faced. I don't think we have faced a big pandemic prior to this. So probably right. it's something, an eye opener for all of us. And, and it's a challenge that you know, we are facing daily and trying to overcome as much of difficulties as we can. Yeah. Now, I mean, the, I, I don't, I, I, because you see, you know, your friends were in the hospital. In fact, some of my friends as well. And um, it's very hard to get in touch with them and uh, they don't have time. Uh, I wanted to invite more people to, you know, yeah. uh, share this whole dialogue session with you. Yeah. But I don't think, uh, I don't think any less uh, of uh, or difference between uh, yourself as a frontliner on a GP versus, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, those who are in the hospital, because both of you guys, uh, or, you know, both of, uh, of the fields or the uh, either in hotel, I'm um, the hotel, hospital uh, yeah. versus, uh, versus the GP. I think all of them are challenged, uh, you know, significantly. Definitely. So Dr. The question is, you know, the routine, you know, before COVID, after yeah. COVID, how has your routine changed? Okay, uh, routine has, uh, I, w- I would say, take a 360 degree turn all the way. Um, mm-hmm. You see, um, basically, if you talk about routine uh, as, a, as a GP, from um, the time the pandemic began in March in Malaysia, um, the routine for me has been practically um, focusing on um, seeing patients every single day, probably uh, one off day a week and, and the rest of the days I, I manage the practice. And um, the whole routine of managing patients has become very different to before. And um, from March onwards, you know, we had to take a lot of different steps where we have to screen patients before coming in. You know, it's, it's very different when patients go to hospital, I say example, supermarkets or, you know, shops. 
they, they, they screen, they write their names and their temperature and they go in. But when you, when you come to places like um, a hospital or a GP clinic, um, if the patient is not well in front of your door, even though their temperature is spiking, um, it's uh, a, a bit absurd for me to actually not to allow him to come into my clinic because that's my job. I have to see him. You know, whether uh, he may be having COVID or not, it's secondary. You know, I still have to see him and um, treat him and uh, eventually uh, also uh, track him down in a couple of days and see how is he doing eventually, you know, did he end up, uh, you know, going to the hospital? Did he get a COVID positive COVID test? And um, you see, that, that's the, the tricky part when it comes to, to uh, medical practice. A, a lot of changes in administrative point of view has also been taken. And I'm also doing a lot of COVID screenings at the moment from March Till date, I've done almost, I think, about three to 5,000 people. So it's a lot of people that I have been screening as well. So things are very different where prior to COVID, it was more of, you know, solving their situations and problems, not much focusing, but now COVID is on top of the line. Anyone who comes in, it's either COVID until proven otherwise. Yeah. Right. Now, some say it's the second wave. Some say it's the third wave. At this time, you know, uh, I, I don't think we're only going to be speaking about Malaysia, but globally, uh, you know, the, another wave, another wave has, uh, you know, started or erupted again, uh, and numbers are spiking up. Now, as a doctor who's been, you know, since March, you guys have been working tirelessly and, uh, you know, trying to, your level best in bringing the numbers down in, uh, they say, you know, flattening the line, you know, just basically making it go down to one digit. We, we, we even reached one digit in Malaysia. Um, so we did. And so, you know, would you, uh, do, would you say that this was expected or this was a mistake or how would um, your, your feeling, you know, obviously there must be a lot of hard work blood, sweat, you guys have been, you know, uh, putting in, devoting in putting those numbers down. So obviously there must be mixed, um, mixed emotions, feelings when you see the numbers are going up. So uh, how, how do you feel? Is this expected or uh, this was inevitable? Um, okay, if you take it from uh, my point of view, yeah. I personally think that this was inevitable. This mm -hmm. was going to happen as, um, of course, you see, when you, when you talk about a pandemic, we are dealing with a problem which we don't have a cure. Yeah. We don't have a vaccine. So the ultimate way of controlling a pandemic is by controlling the spread of the disease. Right. However, the downside of the situation is that this is a disease where it spreads very easily stays over yeah. on surfaces. Um, you know, the virus um, catches on people very easily. And yeah. the, the other thing is that we have so many asymptomatic carriers around. So being asymptomatic, no one knows whether, you know, are you carrying the virus or not? Your immune system may be way too strong for you to exhibit any symptoms. So Coming to um, the second or the third wave, I, I think eventually this was going to happen. You know, not right. just in Malaysia, but globally. And um, things might even get worse by before end of the year if things are not controlled. Even if you look at um, those um, uh, footballers playing in the Premier League for that matter, right. and, you know, they just had the friendlies in um, uh, Europe. Uh, a couple of players, even Cristiano Ronaldo just Ronaldo. Uh, got COVID, you know. So, yeah. you know, as much as um, he didn't want to get COVID, I, I don't think he was exposed to, but, but, you know, even as people as fit as him has been diagnosed with COVID, that is just through testing. He probably didn't have any symptoms for that matter. Correct. But because they screened him for during the football match, they detected that he had COVID. So, that, these kind of situations will eventually keep spreading and I think the numbers will keep getting bigger eventually. Of course, we will have a big group which have been healed and cured and they recover. And, um, but there will be definitely 
people who have weaker immune systems and older patients and uh, those people who probably will have a bit more detrimental effect to their health because of the virus. Yeah. So that's probably something which we have to probably face at the moment. Yeah. Now, I'm sure, I'm sure many have asked you these questions from patients to uh, people who know uh, that you are a doctor, even your family members and your relatives probably would have asked you this question and I'm yeah. going to be asking the same yeah. question. Any okay. idea, any idea uh, of when this will be over or is this something which we will be living with for the rest of our lives? Um. I, I, I would say that um, when a pandemic like this happens, um, it's a virus that is going to stay for a very long time. This, this is going to be something in the environment for a very long time. I don't think um, anyone in the medical pra practice or even the World Health Organization for that matter thinks that you know the moment the vaccine comes out, it's going to be a 100% cure. I, I don't think it's going to reach that stage of a hundred percent cure. It's going to be in the environment and there are going to be flare ups on and off as the years go by, just as other pandemics such as the influenzas and stuff prior to this. So there's going to be um, situations where, you know, you will find the vaccine is eventually out and, you know, suddenly in a, in a year or two, you'll find another COVID breakout in certain areas of the world and, you know, things like that will definitely happen. And, and prop, but at that time, I think the world will be much better prepared to actually contain the disease at that moment. So prevent it from actually spreading even and making things worse. Right. Two more questions. Two more questions. No I mean, one yeah. question, one more request, one request, one question, and one surprise for you, doctor. That uh, okay. now, the, 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 the final question which I have is, you know, what would be your advice uh, to the parents, you know, who have young kids? And I'm sure, you, okay. I mean, you have two kids, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm sure many who are watching uh, have kids yeah. as well, uh, yeah. to the parents and to those who are, uh, you know, aspiring to become a doctor or to take medicine as a, a career path. What would okay. be your advice to everyone? Um, choosing medicine as a career, um, you know, a lot of people will say that, you know, it's a, a very daunting task. It's not a very easy career. Um, a lot of time is going to be spent actually completing the course, leave alone practicing what you learn. And uh, it's a lifelong learning. It's a lifelong journey. You, you will never hear a doctor saying that, at the age of 50, they have stopped learning because everybody is learning. So right. to those people who desire or they think they want their kids to become doctors, I think, you know, uh, leave the negatives aside, think positive. And um, if um, your kids or even the people who desire to become doctors, if you are determined and you, you think that this is the career for you, um, don't uh, feel the negativity of uh, that, you know, it's a very difficult life. You're not going to get time with your family and friends. Of course, there are going to be sacrifices along the way. Everyone has to go through sacrifices they are each on their own way. So, you know, in medicine, it's probably a different path where, you know, you have five to six years of studying where you can take that away from your, probably your midlife. And, and a lot of people will say that, you know, five or six years of my life just went by studying. But, you know, eventually, it, it, you, will, you will reap whatever, you know, you have sowed. So, so it, it is definitely rewarding at the end. And um, I don't think um, you will find any doctors at the age of 60 or 70 saying that, you know, I regretted becoming a doctor. Yeah. So you will eventually achieve a, a, a good time even at the end of the day. Yeah. So, so look forward to it. Okay. Okay. That's a good advice. That's a really yeah. good advice. Now, last one is a request, uh, a message to those who are watching, uh, okay. you know, 
what would you, what would your message be? Um, how? I mean, uh, probably you could uh, also tell everyone uh, how could everyone uh, to those who are watching the public, how can they help um, uh, the frontliners? I think uh, that would be the final final uh, request for the dialogue. Okay, um, how can everyone help the frontliners? Um, of course. The basic, basic, basic um, point here is that, of course, everyone keeps saying that adhere to the standard operating procedure. You know, that is, of course, the the top of the line. That you know, the more you adhere to the SOP, the least you spread the virus. You you don't contract the virus, and it's eventually going to reduce the burden on the frontliners because. Mind you that at the moment, Malaysia is face, facing a huge shortage of medical officers. And um, that is probably something which you really can do. The, the second thing I would say is that um, avoid going to the hospitals for unnecessary, simple reasons which you think they can be managed outside the hospital. Because... From personal experience, I've worked in the emergency department. You know, you see various cases and, you know, it comes to your mind that um, they, it, it's not as an emergency situation that you need to come to the emergency department. You know, things like can example, for example, if you want to have a full body checkup, you will just admit yourself. I think that is one of the most common cases I've ever, you know, I've, yeah. I've heard, you know, from yeah. my doctor yeah. friends is sharing to me. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 you know, it, it's best to avoid things like this at the moment and, you know, yeah. things which are simple and uh, minor ailments, which you don't need to go to the hospital, probably stay away from it, you know, and, and that will really help and reduce the burden of patients to the frontliners and they can focus on people who really needs to be seen. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Dr. Navin. Uh, also, uh, to those who are watching, uh, I think one last one additional from me is don't panic. Uh, you know, if you think that uh, you're not feeling well, you're a bit out under the weather, don't directly assume that it's COVID. Uh, yes. You know, a couple of days back, my sister uh, told me like, you know what? Uh, oh my God, I got flu. Oh my God, I got so <laughs> Oh my God, I'm COVID. You know, so that <laughs> caused a lot of stress. So I think everyone, yeah. don't panic. Don't panic, yes. relax, you know, Definitely. and just, just avoid, avoid going to, uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, people, they are crowded places. So don't, yeah. don't do that. Stay at home. Uh, you know, if you go to work, come back home, just be at home, just like how we are doing this conversation yeah. at home. Yeah. Yes. So uh, you will be safe. Now, Dr. Navin, I really, really, really sincerely thankful for your time i know you've been no tired we, we were supposed to do this uh way earlier but you've been uh, busy with also the yeah. incoming cases and stuff yeah. um, sending you strength send, sending Thank you me. all the blessings all the power uh yeah. you know and you need it because i know you start in the early in the morning and you go and drill down right till the evening before you yeah. can even have uh you know a little quality time with your family. So on behalf of all the viewers and not only yourself, but I think uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, all the doctors uh, from all the hospitals, GPs yeah. around Malaysia and around the world. Thank you so much. And the battle is not over, but you guys are definitely uh, our heroes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Navin. And as no a token of appreciation, um, our food partner, uh, Desi Tarka uh, will be sending you, uh, you know, love uh, through a special meal. Uh, we'll Thank get you. in touch, and we will get in touch, and uh, I will arrange the delivery. Uh, perhaps really after the that. after the partial lockdown, we'll try to yeah. we'll try to get the delivery done. So thank sure, you, sure. No thank worries. you. No worries. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Dr. Thank Narin. you so much. Thank you, Bali, for having me. Thank, thank you. you so much. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. That was episode number 18 with Dr. Navin. Before we say goodbye, I would like to give a shout out to my partners. 
from our content, be strategic, digital artwork, DH creation, food, Desi Tarka, video live streaming and production, Mosaic production. And to those who are watching, please be safe, stay safe, stay at home, follow the SOP. We will get through this together and I'll see you next week on another episode of Be Positive with Pali. Bye-bye.